If you've read The Lord of the Rings and the Silmarillion, then you should really read this book. Hey everyone, this is James from Growing Books. So it's been a while since my last upload and I wanted to follow up on the recent video and talk to you about this. Now, this is what I consider to be one stocky appendix book containing all the intricate information that could not possibly be inserted into the Silmarillion and the Lord of the Rings. So, to give it its proper title, Unfinished Tales of Numenor and Middle-earth is a collection of narratives from the First, Second and Third Ages, serving as connective tissue between the Silmarillion, the Hobbit and the Lord of the Rings. It was published posthumously and put together by Christopher Tolkien. There are hidden gems in this marvellous book, background information and stories that would have otherwise been left undiscovered by the avid reader, specifics and historical depth to many of the happenings in Middle-earth. Rather than being an entire cohesive book with a set of interconnected narratives, readers are presented with categorized subjects relating to a particular aspect of Tolkien's world, hence the cunning use of the word unfinished. The text itself shouldn't prove to be too difficult to read, considering you've just emerged from the murky recesses of the Silmarillion. Furthermore, every chapter is accompanied by Christopher Tolkien's expertly written notes and commentaries. Notes which should be constantly accessed whenever there is a reference made to them throughout the text. This will help you to better appreciate, understand and analyze the chapter at hand. So Unfinished Tales is divided into four individual sections. However, tackling the introduction first will immediately orientate you within the structure and purpose of the book. Part 1. The First Age Excerpts from two major tales in the Silmarillion find their way in the first section of Unfinished Tales. These are Of Tuor and His Coming to Gondolin and Narni Hin Hurin, translated as The Tale of the Children of Hurin. The former presents us with an extensive account that is briefly retold in chapter 23 of the Silmarillion, where Tuor, a mortal man, discovers the hidden elven city of Gondolin, an event which will prove crucial in the climax of the Silmarillion. Naturally, in Unfinished Tales, this story focuses more on the finding of the city and the journey that Tuor makes across the lands of Beleriand. Unfortunately, it stops rather abruptly, as soon as he witnesses the hidden valley and Gondolin itself. Nevertheless, it provides an extensive version to the already known account in the Silmarillion. Similarly, Narni Hinhorin is a more in-depth version of the chapter known as Of Turin to Rambar, chapter 21 in the Silmarillion. Again, constant references to the footnotes found in the text will help you wade through the story even better. At one point, the text breaks up and a note references a brief appendix at the end of the chapter, detailing a particular aspect of Turin's life. It would be more rewarding for the reader at this point to skip the narrative and jump into the appendix itself, and then going back into the main narrative. Chronologically, it will be of substantial help. Now, many have asked me whether there is any particular difference or significance between Narni Hin Hurin and Narni Hin Hurin, which is the title found in the standalone version of the story, The Children of Hurin. The answer is rather simple. They both pretty much tell the same story except for a slight change in the title. You see, in order to avoid mispronunciation of the word hin or children, Christopher Tolkien took the decision to remove the C completely, making unaware readers that the correct pronunciation should be as in the German Bach, rather than the more common CH in English, chin. Regretting this decision, he reapplied the correct spelling to the 2007 standalone publication of the story. With that particular book's publication, it makes this particular section in the Unfinished Tales rather redundant and slightly outdated, given that we now have the complete version of the story in one single book. However, I still enjoy reading this section in Unfinished Tales because I also enjoy reading Christopher Tolkien's editorial notes and commentaries and seeing the way he presents the text from an editorial point of view. Part 2. The Second Age 
This next section is an indispensable read if you want to know more about the Second Age, something which lacks in Tolkien's writings. You'll discover about the geographical layout of the island, along with a detailed list of all the ruling kings and queens of Númenor, not to mention the story of Aldarion and Erendist, the mariner's wife. A narrative about two particular individuals, Aldarion being the sixth king of Númenor, with an insightful look into the seafaring structure of the island. The last part of this section in the book also includes the history of Galadriel and Celeborn, which fleshes out some information regarding the two characters during the Second Age, providing the necessary background in understanding their motives and actions during the events of the War of the Ring. Part 3. The Third Age. What happened to Isildur and his men during the Battle of the Last Alliance? Read more about that in the disaster of the Gladden Fields. Ever wanted to know how the friendship of Rohan and Gondor began? Then you should follow the story of Kirion and Eor, and the friendship of Gondor and Rohan. You'll also be able to learn and understand the military organization of Rohan itself which is a brilliant piece of writing. Basically, this section details backstories from the Third Age that are alluded to or mentioned in passing in The Lord of the Rings. And if you thought that the history of Middle-earth couldn't get any deeper, well, it just did. Not only from The Lord of the Rings, but there is also a piece in Unfinished Tales entitled The Quest of Erebor, which is a wonderful account in which Gandalf meets with Thor in Oakenshield before the events of The Hobbit which details the wizard's concern about the existence of Smaug the Dragon and the Dark Lord Sauron. Thus, Tolkien provides us with a narrative that connects issues between his once children's story with the eventual darker, more epic sequel. Bridging the gap between The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings is also the existence of another account known as The Hunt for the Ring, incorporating various known characters and their journeys before the start of the events in The Fellowship of the Ring, mainly the Ring Wraith's search for the One Ring and the storyline of Aragorn and Gandalf's quest to find Gala. If you've read The Lord of the Rings, references to these are made in the chapter specifically known as the Council of Elrond. However, as with the other narratives presented in The Unfinished Tales, these go deeper and expand more on the happenings themselves. Lastly, the Battles of the Fords of Isen, which recounts the struggles between the forces of Isengard and the Rohirrim before the Battle of Helm's Deep during the War of the Ring. Further insight is given into the strategies involved and the outcomes of these two important battles, which strongly contrasts with the fleeting glimpses that we get about the battles in the two towers. Part 4. Essays Thankfully for us readers, Tolkien wrote several essays about some of the most mysterious aspects of Middle-earth, and provided explanations and commentaries to their natures and roles in the stories. Three of these are found in the last section of this book, the Druedain, the Istari, and the Palantiri. The first of these supplies us with information about the mysterious people known as the Woses, found in the Druadan forest in the Return of the King. Their history from the First Age is explained, and many of the what's and the why's that we might have asked during our read of the Lord of the Rings are explained here. Now, who were the five wizards? If you've read The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings, you would know about Gandalf, Saruman, and Radagast. Rarely mentioned are the two blue wizards. Therefore, this essay sets out to explain the nature of these wizards, their purpose in Middle-earth, and we get to learn more about these two mysterious wizards and what happened to them. Finally, the third essay provides information about the All-Seeing Stones, also known as the Palantiri. By now, you all know my position on the importance of indexes and maps in these kinds of books. In Unfinished Tales, you will be provided with an extensive index of names detailing the numerous characters, places, and events that occur in the book, together with a short description on each name. The book also contains a redrawn map of Middle-earth, which is slightly less detailed than what we're accustomed to seeing in The Lord of the Rings but it provides all the essential information that is necessary to read and reference in the book. And it's still a handy feature whilst working your way through this book. Now, I've always thought of this book as being that volume which satisfies one's appetite for more Middle-earth information. 
and is an absolutely necessary companion when reading stories about Middle-earth. There are a few issues concerned with whether some of the text is canon or not. Nonetheless, wherever any conflicting dates or explanations occur, Christopher Tolkien is quick to point these out and provide an explanation for them. It's such a wonderful thing to have at your disposal these four books, together with The Silmarillion, The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings, and that they are somehow interconnected with each other, spanning a history of thousands of years, from the world's creation before the First Age, to major cataclysmic events that eventually introduce the Fourth Age. So here's hoping that one day the publishers decide to produce a massive single volume edition spanning two and a half thousand pages of all four works together. I'd immediately propose a name for it, the saga of the jewels and the rings. Well, you never know. Anyway, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, like, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Cheers.